very good afternoon to everyone, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, our uh, friends from the press, thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us uh, at this important gathering as we observe Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Before I say anything further, I'd also like to acknowledge the partnership which we've crafted here with the Philippine Cancer Society and Dr. Rachel Rosario. Thank you so much for being a part of this event. During the entire month of November, global efforts are highlighting the burden, risk factors, prevention and proper treatment of lung cancer. In 2020, about 2.2 million diagnoses were reported. Lung cancer remains to be the most common cause of cancer-related mortality worldwide, with nearly 1.8 million deaths in 2020. Majority of the cases and deaths occur in Asia, followed by Europe. Treating patients suffering from lung cancer is challenging, especially because it involves late diagnosis, which in turn often leads to high mortality rates. Although the recent years have welcomed revolutionary changes in the management of lung cancer, there is still nothing better than emphasizing the importance of prevention. Through this forum, we hope to provide our friends in the media and with the help of PCS, a fruitful learning experience so that we can continue to strengthen all efforts to increase awareness on lung cancer, including its prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Let's make Lung Cancer Awareness Month matter, not only every November, but the entire year around. Thank you, Mr. Harman Betty. The scientific program now begins with an introduction of our first distinguished speaker by Dr. Pauline Ann Peronilia Carlton, moderator for this session. Dr. Peronilia Carlton is a medical oncologist whose special interest is in palliative and supportive care. She is a fellow of the Philippine Society of Medical Oncology and the Philippine College of Physicians. At the Cardinal Santos Medical Center, she is a doctor champion of the Cancer Registry or Care Philippines, member of both the Institutional Ethics Review Board and the Palliative Care and Hospital Unit Core Team of Physicians, as well as advisor for the Cancer Patients Group. In 2018, she received the International Development and Education Award in Palliative Care from the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Please welcome Dr. Pauline and Pernilia Carlton. Good afternoon. It is my honor and privilege to be with everyone this afternoon. And we're hoping that whatever brought you here in this time, in this place, to be at this session, we hope that by the end, you will have a better hold, a better picture of what cancer is and all the many things that we are doing, that, can, that we can do about it. Especially now, during the Lung Cancer Awareness Week, it's the perfect time to have our distinguished speakers to share with us the fundamentals of this serious, but very relevant disease, including its signs, symptoms, screening and treatment. So firstly, we have with us today, Dr. Christine Chavez. Okay, so Dr. Chavez is a specialist in clinical and interventional pulmonology. She is a consultant and training officer for fellowship at the Medical City Hospital section of pulmonology. Dr. Chavez is also affiliated with Cardinal Santos Medical Center and her professional memberships include the World Association for Bronchology and Interventional Pulmonology, the European Respiratory Society, and the Philippine Medical Association. She is a diplomat and fellow of the Philippine College of Chest Physicians as well as the Philippine College of Physicians. So let's kick off this afternoon session with the presentation of Dr. Christine Chavez, Lung Cancer 101, Signs, Symptoms, and Screening. Good afternoon to our audience. 
Thank you to AstraZeneca and uh, the Philippine Cancer Society for this privilege to share and to share our advocacy on decreasing the mortality from lung cancer. So I was asked today to describe the signs and symptoms of lung cancer and what is the screening tool to diagnose or detect lung cancer early. So as mentioned a while ago, globally, lung cancer is second to breast as the most common cancer. It is second to breast. But as a cause of cancer death, lung is the top cause of death among all cancers. In the Philippines, this is also the case. Lung is the most common cancer with 19,000 new cases in 2020, but is the top cause of death from lung cancers among all cancers, with approximately 17,000 of people dying from the disease. So we cannot underscore the fact that lung cancer is a deadly disease, especially when it's diagnosed at the late stages. You can see here that in a study on the number of patients within five years, so these are the number of people who were diagnosed to have lung cancer. Among everyone who were diagnosed to uh, have lung cancer, only 22.9, the dream ones, were able to survive within five years after cancer diagnosis. Why is this the case? Because a majority of the cases at present are diagnosed at the late stage already of the disease. So if we can see here, 55% of all patients who are diagnosed to have cancer are already in the advanced stage of the disease and only few were diagnosed in the early stage. The early stage being the stage where we can do more and we can control or possibly cure lung cancer uh, better. So here, you can see that the percentage of patients who survive within five years is really low if the cancer has already spread compared with patients who have lung cancer that are only localized. So what causes lung cancer? Smoking remains the most common cause of lung cancer. But um, it is still also important to know that over 50% of women and some percentage of men can develop lung cancer even without the risk of um, having ever smoked. So anyone with lungs can be at risk for lung cancer. Why is that so? Because um, there is second, there are also factors such as secondhand smoke exposure, indoor and outdoor air pollution, the pollution that we get from combust combustion of um, engines, and inside the house when um, in individuals who use uh, biomass fuels for cooking. If you have a family member who has a history of lung or any cancer and exposure to certain chemicals or pollution in the workplace, such as coal fumes, feed on gas, asbestos, uh, which is found in cement, or silica. So these are the risk factors. Smoking cigarettes is the most common risk factor, and but these are also uh, the common risk factors for developing lung cancer. So what are the common signs of uh, lung cancer? Usually when the cancer has already spread or is already increasing in size, there is persistent or worsening cough. Some patients cough up blood or rust-colored sputum or phlegm. There may be chest pain that persons with coughing there may be persistent or recurring uh, lung infections such as bronchitis or pneumonia. There may be hoarseness or loss of voice without any sore throat. Breathlessness, 
or wheezing sound, weight loss that is unintentional or unexplained, loss of appetite, and fatigue. So these are usually the common symptoms of lung cancer. However, I would like to emphasize that these symptoms that I mentioned are usually manifestations of late stage cancer. In the early stage of lung cancer, there are usually no symptoms. So, how do we go about that? Kung walang symptoms, paano natin madetect? We look at the risk factors. So usually, lung cancer um, in the previous years, we, we used to uh, do chest x-rays to detect lung cancer. However, there are certain, most of the beginning lung cancer cases cannot be detected on x-ray alone. So there, there were studies that were done that compared x-ray and, do, and low dose computed tomography scan in um, detecting lung cancer. Because for a screening tool, like for example, in breast cancer and colon cancer, we already know the, the, the tests to do to screen for, for those cancers, like mammography for breast and colonoscopy for colon. So for a screening tool to become effective or for a, for a diagnostic test to be recommended as a screening tool, it has to be proven to decrease the number of people who die from the disease. So in several in studies that have compared X-ray and low-dose chest CT scan, uh, it was found that low-dose low computed tomography or CT scan, low-dose CT scan, is the tool that decreased the number of people who died from lung cancer. So compared with a regular full-dose chest CT scan, Low-dose chest CT scan has over five times lower amount of radiation uh, emitted. This is hugely important, especially for individuals who have high risk factors for the disease or for lung cancer. This is what I was describing a while ago. Can you see this area? So this is an example of one patient that we've handled uh, who had early stage lung cancer. He, uh, the patient had risk factors, and on low dose specialty scan, we the, we found this um, abnormality on the lungs. This abnormality cannot be seen on X-ray, but when we screened using low dose specialty scan, we were able to detect this, and um, eventually um, the patient underwent surgery and has um, survived for a long time. So these were the studies that I mentioned a while ago. So both these studies showed that screening of high-risk individuals using low-dose chest CT scan decreased the number of people who died from lung cancer by 20 to 24 percent. So that is a significant amount, considering that um, lung cancer may be uh, deadly in the late stage of the disease. So. I mentioned about high-risk individuals and also the uh, risk factors for lung cancer. So among the risk factors that I mentioned, these were the risk factors that were proven uh, to be the eligibility criteria for low-dose chest CT scan. So in healthy individuals aged 50 to 75 years with a, smet with a heavy smoking history, heavy smoking which is defined as smoking more than 15 cigarettes a day for more than 25 years or more than 10 cigarettes a day for more than 30 years. If the individual has quit, that is good. Uh, but if the quit time is less than 10 years, to recommend to have low-dose chest CT screening. Another factor is of course, decreasing the risk. Among the risk factors that I mentioned a while ago, there are unmodifiable, such as the genetic predisposition, your occupational exposure, but there, is, there are also risk factors that you can modify, which is the, the, the good thing is the most common cause of lung cancer, which is smoking, is a modifiable risk factor. So decreasing your risk for lung cancer is the key 
not having the disease is the key. But if you feel, or if you if you have a family friend, uh, you have a family member or a friend who, uh, who may be at high risk, then it is recommended to undergo screening so we can catch it early. So in summary, lung cancer is the second most common cancer and is the top cause of cancer death globally and in the Philippines. Majority are diagnosed in the advanced in the advanced stage, which has a poor survival. Uh, smoking is the most important risk factors, but non-smokers can also develop lung cancer. Hopefully in the future, you will be able to find out which of those uh, non-smoking risk factors may be included in the eligibility criteria for low dose chest CT scan. Therefore, we would like to underscore that early diagnosis is key. Be aware of the signs and symptoms, and also know and lessen your risk factors. Lung cancer screening by low dose chest CT scan can save lives, especially in high risk individuals. So if you are at risk, get screened. Or if you know anyone, your family or your friends may be at risk, advise them to get screened. Modify and lessen your risk factors. Thank you. If you have questions, I'm open to questions later, or you can get in touch with us through the number flashed on the screen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chavez, for breaking down for us the basics of screening and detection of lung cancer. Now, once detected, once diagnosed, uh, what comes next? Like our that old 80s cartoon taught us, not knowing is just half the battle. So for that, we have Dr. Soledad Palete to guide us through the principles of lung cancer treatment. Dr. Balete is a former executive officer at UPPGH, Department of Medicine. She is also a consultant at the Metropolitan Medical Center and Chinese General Hospital. She is actually, she's the head of a, several departments at Jose Reyes Medical Center. Uh, she's the head of the section of medical oncology, uh, of the Hospital Multidisciplinary Tumor Board, of the Credentials Committee of the Department of Internal Medicine, as well as the Perform Performance Governance System and Best Practice Sharing and Multi-Sectoral Governance Council. And she's also part of the Multi-Sector Governance Council Committee. So we are very lucky that she has made time to be with us this afternoon. So let's all welcome Dr. Soledad Palete. Chavez has uh, told us that the number one cancer killer, and even in the U.S., no, the one she showed is Philippines and U.S. The number one killer is lung cancer. So that is really very striking to know how important it is to be aware for lung cancer about the importance of this illness. Now, a while ago also, Dr. Chavez mentioned the symptoms of lung cancer. So whenever the symptom occurs, you have to be, uh, be vigilant and be uh, on top and know that the symptoms are there. So as she mentioned, the patient has either a smoking history 
or a secondhand smoke. So a secondhand smoke means someone is smoking and you are there. So it's just equivalent to say that you're also smoking in a way. So then the patient will manifest cough, you know, and then coughing out blood. Sometimes when you cough, there is blood. And you will also, at times, you will feel that your voice, if you're a singer, now you are no longer a good singer because your voice becomes hoarse. And then we sing like you're having some form of hiccup this time. Then you suddenly feel now your weight is already decreased, your weight becomes uh, thinner before mataba, now you're already tired. For no reason at all, meaning you're eating, you're eating well, but you're, you're losing your weight. Difficulty in swallowing, sometimes you feel something is there to block your food, and then you need to have yourself be seen by a doctor. Basically, when you see a doctor, they will do x-ray. Chest x-ray is what they do at first to see. Then uh, the doctor will advise you if you need a CT scan. Kung sometimes they don't see a mass, but they are thinking something is there, they will request a CT scan. So early detection for lung cancer is important because it will save your life. As mentioned a while ago by our speaker, mostly the lung cancer, when the symptoms appear, then the stage is already advanced. So around 20% will come as early. 20 means kung may sampung patient, two will be early. Eight of them will be, tama ba? Yeah, eight of them, 20%, no, in 10. So eight of them will become advanced meaning it's really high. So, the best thing is really to avoid those risk factors. Kasi, once the lung cancer is there, the symptom will appear, the stage is already advanced when it is discovered. So, here it is the, also the like the CT scan showed. This is a CT scan view, the white on the right side, on your side, on the right side is a mask that you're seeing. Also there on the left side, on my side, and left side on my side, and on your side, left from your side. So in this situation, a needle, usually a needle is inserted like a hiringilia so that the, the, the lesion will be pierced through jadaan so that a biopsy can be taken. That is what we call a CT guided. There's a CT scan that will guide to make sure that if they will hit the right one, not the other one that is black, but the white, the white with a circle. So as we can see, this is showing to us that the lung cancer treatment over the years, not pababa, it's going up, meaning improving as time goes and as years come, more options are being given to us. So that the surviving years, when I was in training, mga less than five lang. So that was mga 25 years ago, when I was a student in cancer medicine. But now, it's already 22.9 and still rising over the years. No, So very good, kasi we have more options. So, 29, 22.9 is around, shall we say, 25%. So that's good from the time that it was less than 5. So you can also see before, yung early part, yung mga uh, years, years back, 1890, the only option was radiotherapy. When a patient is diagnosed with lung cancer, sasabihin mo na, na radiotherapy ka lang. So, and then as time goes, the radiotherapy naman uh, is being, the patient is being offered surgery, meaning option of surgery. But the problem of surgery, as I have said, it can only be really applicable to the early stage. And as I said a while ago, many of the lung cancer are of the advanced stage when they present with symptoms. Then aside from the surgery, we have the traditional chemotherapy. Because sometimes when patients come, they will say, 
when I see a doctor, an oncologist, they can say nothing except chemotherapy. But nowadays, it's not like that anymore. We have more options, no? As the projection is going up, more options are coming. So 1998 to present, we have the precision therapy, what we call the targeted, which we will describe uh, shortly after this. Then also, as years come, 1997 to now, immunotherapy naman. So we will go into it uh, uh, one by one. So surgery, as you know, is being done by a thoracocardiovascular surgeon, not us. No? So the surgeon do the surgery in order to remove, tatanggalin the mass. The goal is to remove, remove the cancer from the body and along with some normal looking tissue. So removing the mass and the surrounding normal tissue, the normal tissue is called the surgical margin. So this is applicable sa early stage lung cancer wherein surgery can be done so that the mass is removed. Once removed, then the mass is no longer there in that spot, the yellow one there. Then aside from the surgery that was mentioned is radiotherapy. So both surgery and radiotherapy are what we call local. They are both local therapy. We sabi ng local, you can imagine you get a flashlight and, and focus that on your, let's say, on your face or your body. That's local. May local uh, application. No? Imagination of a flashlight, putting it wherever you want. So that's local. Then this is administered by a radiation oncologist, not a medical oncologist. This uses high-energy x-ray to treat lung cancer. So, and it damage cancer cell, and the cancer cell either die or stop, uh, or stop from making new cancer cell. So, the radiation is very strong, very strong enough to die, to kill the cell even down to the DNA. You mga genia, it can also kill down to the DNA. It is offered delivered by a large machine as shown here and the x-ray, the radiation, go through the skin. So that the answer skin and travel go to the tumor. Now have you seen a laser when you when you've seen a laser, you know, if you're playing with a laser, you can imagine how 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 precise and how deep the penetration, no? Something like that. And then the healthy tissue is protected using some shield in order to just hit the cancer cell. Now, chemotherapy, I know you have, have somehow you have relatives na nagkaroon na ng mga treatment, so it's just like putting a suero over the, the, the vein or sometimes the, the suero is put here using the portafat. So, chemotherapy is turned to to, to cover the drugs that kill the rapidly dividing cells. Meaning when the cells are active, so the chemotherapy is very good in killing the cancer cells. So the patient will need to go to a treatment facility to be able to receive chemotherapy. So ano yung treatment facility? Normally in mga hospital, we have treatment facilities for cancer treatment. And the chemotherapy like that, the patient is seated and with the suero, the, the chemotherapy is injected into your vein, and this is called infusion. Then the drug will travel to the blood, to the entire body. It will go to your blood, the whole body. So meaning, the one I mentioned a while ago, surgery and radiotherapy is just like putting a flashlight to a local, but here, the drug will travel. So that's why it can cover what we call the micrometastasis, the things that you cannot see, yung, yung somewhere there that you do not know. So chemotherapy will cover that. Now next to this is we have the, so the precision or targeted therapy. So yung targeted therapy is belongs to the newer, newer innovation na. So, this works by influencing the process that control the growth division of cancer cell as well as the signal that cause the cancer cell to die naturally. 
they selectively target cancer cells with specific mutation. They they have they are more effective and has less side effect than chemotherapy. So the targeted therapy is like parang parang a husband looking for a wife, di ba? So the husband would choose the best target, meaning he doesn't choose any any woman. So sabi niya, this will be my wife. So he will target the person or this one. The medicine will target the the cancer cell using the target that that the medicine will act upon. So very specific yung target niya. So what is the target? Kasi when you target the the part, there is so called the downstream, meaning may trigger. So when you target, parang if you want to target the head, para there will be no more uh, uh, influence down, down to it, para to middle siya, then you have to target that part that will cause the the so-called signal, downstream signal, meaning pag buhuli ka ng, ng masamang tao, what you will do, you have to make buhuli the bad person, di ba, the leader. And then the other members will, they will be, ano na, kakagulo because the leader is already uh, black, di ba? So parang ano yan eh, parang mga bad, bad dun sa mga war, di ba? If you want to stop the war, you you have to catch the the target, the person who leads the war. So, parang ganon, no? You have to be precise in knowing who is the bad person here, who is the bad cell, who is the leader of the bad cell. So you want to target the leader, and then you, you will make sure once you target the leader, the other apo apo and the other down the bad people the bad cells down there will obey because the leader is already trapped something like that no so usually the targeted nowadays we have the oral that's why the picture there is a tablet we have the oral so the patients when you see that the patient usually you check the specimen can this patient be applied with this target is there something that i can target if there is none, there's no use that I would target. But if there is something that I can target, pwede ko i-target, I will give this medicine that will target this one that I will target. And then, once you target the the targetable, what we mean yung pwede ko i-target, makikilin siya. And then, the cells will stop multiplying. Kasi you already, uh, you already touch the, the bad one. Who, who who is the leader no? who who tell the other members now you stop already because I'm already stopped. No? So there is a specific target. And because of this advent, nowadays the patients they would prefer really the oral. Kasi nga, convenience, ganyan. Pero just a caution, not all patients with lung cancer, they can be given target. Before you give the targeted drug, there is some test that we need to do in order to see whom the patient can receive the target. Meaning, is there something that we can target? If none, if we do not know where is the leader or what is the name of the target, then there is no use that we will target. So we have to know that by testing the specimen or the target. No? Now, for the next treatment, that is what we call the immunotherapy. Ah, this is the difference of chemotherapy versus targeted. So, yung chemotherapy sinasabi ko are those before when the patient has lung cancer, what we offer chemo or chemo, you know, but now we have targeted na. Now, for chemotherapy, it acts by damaging rapidly dividing cells, yung mga active cells. That's why they have more side effect. What are the side effects that you know? Loss of hair, no? Or sometimes the patient feel weak, the blood cell, the red cell, the white cell goes down, infection, admission, ganyan, no? And but with the advent of targeted treatment, this is unique to cancer cell. So this, uh, this medicine will cause the disruption of the pathway. Kumbaga, yung downstream signaling, yung downstream otos niya, pababa na, pag trap na siya, no more otos na, sa pababa na, you have to multiply. Then, 
This is unique to cancer cell, which is absent in normal cell. Yung being bad influence niya is only seen in the cancer cell. But in the normal cell, mabait eh. So, mabait siya. Walang ganun. Then, generally, they have milder side effect. The tablet that we're mentioning has mild side effect. Usually, mga rashes or some, some form of diarrhea. But, relatively speaking, this is also a little bit uh, uh, a cost. A cost is also a concern. But, although we have certain program now, we're in wherein programs are offered in order to help the patient. Now, next is the immunotherapy. I think the immunotherapy part becomes very clear to you during the COVID time. When you heard about ano yung immunotherapy sa COVID? Tocilizumab. No, I'm not loving it. It's just to make things clearer. So, the immunotherapy works by Remember that the body's defense against disease is called the immune system. Yung panlaban natin sa ating mga condition or sakit, anong tawag? Immune system natin, panlaban. Soldiers of the body. So the soldiers of the body are T cells. The T cells are the soldier, which are the key part of the system. So the soldiers, the T cells that kill, that kill infected and cancer cells, that the soldier will kill the cancer cell, they are called the killer T cells. Then immunotherapy is a treatment that uses the immune system to kill the cancer cell. The immune checkpoint inhibitor are a type of immunotherapy. They work by releasing the brake pedals on the T cells. So what cancer do is that they will they will focus the the soldier of our body, which are called the T cell. So the T cells who are the soldiers of our body are already parang they are already uh, not functioning as a soldier. Now so when we have the immunotherapy, they will help the cancer cell that stop the T cell, saying uh, T cell don't work. So with the immunotherapy, they will help the T cell. By they will help the T cell, they will help the immune system, so that the T cell, the soldier of our body, can go back to normal, so that they can function. Because the function of T cell is the soldier cell that provides our immune system. So na pipila yung sila, kasi na masamak si cancer cell. So since they are no longer working well. Then the, the immunotherapy there is to help to to, uh, to help the immune uh, system. Kasi may mga inhibitor yung cancer cell to on. So for the body not to function well it's the immune system. So we have the immune checkpoint inhibitor are a type of immunotherapy that will release the brake pedals on the T cell. At tanggalin nila yung mga nag-hinder nag sa T-cell na mag-function normally. So sila yung tutulong para si T-cell, yung soldier cell, will act, will function to its uh, function to serve as the soldier of our body. So do you understand? So that's through the, you know, it's through the, suero. it's through the, just like parang chemotherapy, it's given through the IV. So, as we move along, we are saying that in managing cancer, lung cancer, we employ what we call multidisciplinary. Sometimes when my patients ask me, why is it that I have many doctors seeing me? So I said, if you are a patient and you have many doctors seeing you, you're in the right track. Because this is what we call multidisciplinary. Ibig sabihin, nagtutulong yung mga, nandun yung lung doctor, there's the radiation, who does the radiotherapy, radiation oncologist, the surgeon, the chemotherapy, medical oncologist. They talk and then they discuss how and what we will do to our patient. You're not being uh, just uh, managed by one doctor kasi they talk, they, they discuss for the benefit of the patient. So that you can employ kung you want radiotherapy ba, surgery, chemotherapy, 
immunotherapy. So that's that's why discussion is being undertaken. That is what we call a multidisciplinary team effort. So in summary, the recent trend, yung mga bagong mga offers na yung na treatment, shows improvement. These are the reasons for the improvement in the survival of lung cancer due to the advancement. No, not just chemotherapy, not just surgery. And we have now five that we discussed treatment option in our lung cancer patient. And we have, as mentioned a while ago, surgery. We have mentioned radiotherapy. It's a local treatment, just like surgery. Chemotherapy, it is putting a suero, and then the medicine will go to the blood so that it can act to the whole body. It can go to the to the whole body of the patient. The targeted, it will be targeting the patient's, uh, sabi ko nga, the blood bleeder. And then, but there is a need to test the specimen if there is something that we can target before we give the target. And immunotherapy, as I said, is just like the one used by the COVID time wherein we give immunotherapy like tocilizumab so that we can help our immune system to function normally. Otherwise, our immune system are impaired. Hindi na sila gumagana the usual way. So you need to give immunotherapy to, to help your T cell uh, so that the T cell will not be, sabi na, may break siya, may break, may ano siya, may break pedal yung T cell because of the cancer. So, um, uh, so that the, the, rather, there should be a break pedal to stop the, the cancer cell from stopping the T-cell to take its action to become a soldier of the body. So, hindi na siya soldier kasi cancer cell will make him useless. Pero, kailangan with the immunotherapy, it will serve as the brake pedal of the T-cell. So, the treating lung cancer involves team of doctor specialists who I mentioned natin, multidisciplinary team effort to provide ano, best option for the lung cancer patient. So that's why if you have a patient, a relative who see not just one doctor, you, you should not be uh, uh, saying or thinking that the doctor maybe doesn't know, but actually it's the right way to manage the patient by the multidisciplinary team. So I prepared a quick question lang, kasi uh, quick lang. Yan. So para raise hand lang, if you never smoke, you don't need to worry about lung cancer. True false? False. Oh, kasi based on our first discussion, even non-smoker, di ba, they can get, they can also get uh, lung cancer. Yung mga non-smoker. And even, even yung mga passive smoker, yung mga nakaupukta, pero yung husband mo, grabe, no? Grabe yung smoke So, pwede rin. Six question lang ko. Kita rin. Kita rin. There is nothing people can do to lower their chance of getting lung cancer. Pag sinabi bang, ay, smoker naman ako, so, sige, smoke mo lang. So, meaning, nothing we can do ba to lower their chance? True, false. Medyo negative yung question, no? There is nothing daw we can do to lower their chance of getting lung cancer. False to? False. Ang galing nyo. False. Kasi we can do something. For most, if you're a smoker, you have to quit smoking. Ha? So, or anything that causes you to have increased your risk of lung cancer. For people who smoke, much of the lung damage can lead to cancer can be repaired if they quit smoking. If they quit smoking, can the repair be a non-true false? Ha? True false. Pag ano ba, pag, pag nag-smoke ka, may mga damage na yan, so wala na. So, 
I can smoke, 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 or I can I would decide to stop. Siyempre, hopeful thinking or positive thinking. When the patient stops, for most, in two to three months, you would see improvement in the circulation of the blood. Kasi the smoking itself can cause our blood to thicken. No? So the circulation will improve. In 10 years that the patient would stop smoking, let's say 10 years, the, the risk would be decreased by 50%. And if there are symptoms like there is uh, around 10 months the patient's symptoms will improve. So there is hope you know, when the patient decides to quit the, the trigger or the risk factor, there is hope that the lung somehow will appear. There is uh, hope that this symptom will improve. So there is repair in the lung. You know? So Therefore, those are smoking, you have still hope no, not to continue smoking. So, replacing cigarette with the spit tobacco or snuff is safe way. So, baga, okay, na po. Replace the, ano na, what you call that? The, I don't know the name. Oh, the vaping. I know it's letter R. I'm so it's letter R. So, is it, ano na, replace? Okay na, replace? Yes, no. Sino mo na for vaping, anti-vaping? <laughs> so, actually, it does not, it is, it does not, okay, ano, assure us that it is a safe way. In fact, if you do that, there's also increase in the chance of what we call the upper airway malignancy. Yung tiyatawag na either dito na sa throat, or salak or not lung or somewhere here now the, the the head and neck what we call the head and neck malignancy the throat the mouth the pharynx and then on so there is an increase in the malignancy in that uh, part see now where does the the stamping goes it is where it goes no Lung cancer is one of the deadliest cancer. Of course, first speaker. No cause. True. Oh, siyempre true. Hindi, no lung cancer awareness month. Lung cancer often does not cause problem until it is too late. True cause. Meaning, my symptom usually, it's usually not the early, early stage. True cause. Huh? True. True. Okay. So, I hope you understand or get some points from our discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Valete. You can tell that Dr. is really an educator, right? A quiz pack. Um, but not only that, she successfully took on the challenge of summarizing the treatment advices of lung cancer. So because there are so much more, there's so much more to cancer than just the medical side of things, it also is important for us to talk about what happens uh, in all the other aspects of the human experience. So we are also very privileged today to be listening to a lady who will talk to us about her own journey with lung cancer. Our special guest is Ms. Nelia Batage. And she will share with us her experience and insights about living with the disease. Let's all give her a warm welcome. Thank you. 
Kaya na kaka ibu sa kuna isang bat sa puso.
hindi ko naman po pwede hindi sa anak wala hindi pa rin dating siya. Ayaw ko naman magsapir yung pagsasama nila mo sa bagay sa akin. So I try my best na lang yung maraming mga mga kaibigan at mga kilala na malagatipan. Saka nila po ako may hindihan tulong. Hindi naman po sila nagsasawan tumulong. Dahil nung kalakasan ko naman po, may trabaho naman ako, nag-i-hater ako. Kaya nang siguro yung sobrang pagod, ligo, ligo kahit pagod. Doon po rin po siguro na po hindi. Dahil hindi po ako nagsisigarilyo, hindi po ako umainom, wala akong bisyo. Kundi magluto, magluto, kumain, kumain. Pero bakit po ako nagkaroon ng ganito? Nung unang sabihin sa akin na stage or ang sena ko, Nung una umiyak ako, ang iniyak ako ang anak ko dahil hindi ko pa siya kaya iwan kahit may pamilya ko siya. Sa katagalan, kada dasal, kada dasal, matanggap kong lahat siya. Bahala ng Diyos sa akin. Lalapan ako. Hindi ako kailangan magmukulong sa bahay. Hindi ako kailangan umiyak. Magsaya na lang ako. Nga kaya ko magsaya. Kung iiyak ako ng iiyak, baka madepress lang ako nung madepress ko ano pang magawa ko. Ganun lang po ang ginagawa ko ngayon. Babuhay ako sa araw-araw na gusto kong maging masaya. Ayaw kong tignan yung kabila na mamamatay ako. Lahat naman po tayo mamamatay. Kaya nga kanyang panahon, sa panahon gusto ng Diyos. Pananalig lang po sa Panginoon na hindi tayo pababayaan. Kung bukunin niya ako, ayaw ko lang po nang may masakit. Kung, gusto, kung pwede, matulog lang ako na wala ang gisingan. Para hindi na mag- hindi pumasok ang pamilya para sa akin. Kasi sa pamilya ko, pang labing dalawa po ako nag-cancer. Ang father ko, kapatid niya, ang mga katakis ko, mga pamangkin, halos cancer lang ang kinamatay. Ang tatay ko, totoo, malakas man yung sigarilyo ng kapatahan namin. Kasi kami taga-bili ng sigarilyo niya. Ang husband ko, kinamatay ang pangsima sa panigyan ko sa'yo. Pero naitawid ko po yan. Itong buwan ako nag-alaga. Itong buwan ako nag-drive ng taxi ng mark. Para may pang-suporta ako sa oxygen ng 24 hours day. Ngayon, wala naman po ako malalagitan ngayon. O di sa hindi ko. Gagawa ako at gagawa ng paraan. Tara ako sa po. Kung hanggang doon na lang ako, hanggang doon na lang po ako. Pero wala na akong, akong gugulohin sa pamilya. Hindi wala akong nakakalam sa mga kapatid ko, sa mga pangang. Hindi na po ako nagkukwento. Anak ko lang po na alam. Hindi ko po sinasakit na daw po nil. Sakit na binigay ng Diyos sa akin. Sinamahala sa akin. Kaya tayong mga may cancer, mabuhay po tayo ng masaya. Mabuhay po tayo ng lumalaban. Huwag po natin bigibin kung ano yung gusto ng Diyos sa atin. Gawin po natin. Mga karaos po tayo sa araw-araw na buhay natin. Huwag po kayong mawawala ng pag-asa pananampalataya, pananalig sa mga doktor at sa mga gamot na ibigay sa atin, magtiwala po tayo, gagaling po tayo. Kung kulang tayo ng pamili, madami naman pong, nabib- madami naman pong nalalapitan ngayon ng mga ibigay ng gamot, katulad ng sa mga adik. Hindi man po yung mga mahal na gamot ang naibigay sa amin, pero yung mga basic na amin na gamot, hindi na namin pumibigay. Hindi isip ko ng problema ko lang yung every 21 days na 10 21 days, every 10 to 12,000 para sa kilo. Mga karaos po ako. Hindi na po ako nagbalik sa OCRS kasi nabalitaan ko rin po. Maraming nang hindi nakakatimo dahil wala daw kong gamot. Saka hindi po kaya po yung sinasabi ng ongkod rin na magbabayad ako ng 10,000 every week. Ongkod pa rin sa ero po. Ano pang mga gamot-gamot na kayo? Okay na po ako ngayon. Basta tayong mga may cancer, magtiwala tayo sa Diyos, magtiwala tayo sa mga doktor. Marami pong libre doktor ngayon. Ang dami po natin matalapit ang doktor na libre. Hindi lang po sa OPD ng Makati. Hindi lamang po sa OSCA. Meron po tayong CRS, meron po tayong PGX. Laban lang po tayo. Huwag tayong ikiyak. Labanan natin ang cancer. Mahirap. Kaya po natin yan. 76 na po ako, pero lumalaban pa ako para sa mga suko. Yan lang po. Thank you po. Thank you very much, Ms. Nelia Patage.
We will now open the floor for questions from our participants. You may direct your questions to our panel by using the microphones on the floor, or if you are joining in via Zoom, you may raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. Once again, here is our moderator, Dr. Pauline and Belamilia Cotton, to moderate the open forum along with Dr. Christine Chavez and Dr. Soledad Palente. Allow me to give our appreciation um, and thanks to Miss Nadia for that, um, for her generosity, for sharing her story with us today. So can you give her another round of applause? Thank you. Okay. And hello, Dr. Chavez. Nice to see that. Yes, go ahead. Ma, maraming salamat po sa pag-share niya na experience. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, this really is a special afternoon uh, for us to have our our guest speakers. If there are any questions, please raise your hand. 